Hi everyone, today we're gonna make our own handheld console with the help of a Raspberry Pi 3 and a very well put together kit from Adafruit. Let's get into it. We will gonna solder all the parts exactly like in this diagram. I am by no means good with the soldering iron, so this will be a proof that everyone can do it. Let's start assembly by putting the gamepad together. Gather up 10 6mm tactile buttons and a 40 pin IC box header. Insert the box header into the header labeled pins on the back of the gamepad PCB. Secure it in place and flip the gamepad PCB over so the header pins are facing up. Now heat up the soldering iron and apply solder to each of the 40 pins on the header. Ensure the solder joints are clean with no cold solder joints or blobs. They should look like Hershey Kisses. Now we have to prep the 6mm tactile buttons. To make it easier to insert the buttons to the PCB, use a pair of flat pliers to straighten out the four leads of each button. Insert each button into the hole spots on the gamepad PCB. Secure the gamepad and solder up the buttons. Here is what the soldered gamepad will look like. Next one is the Pi TFT display. Flip the display over and locate the pad with the label 18. We need to cut this trace in order to properly use GPIO 18. The Y button is wired to this GPIO. Cutting the trace here will disable the feature. Use a hobby knife to mark in between the two pads and make sure it's deep enough to fully break the trace. That's pretty much all we need to do to the display. Now we have to resize the Pi cable. The stock ribbon cable is 15 cm long, something around 6 inches in length. But I found shortening down to 10 cm is just the right fit. Use measuring tape to get the desired length and mark the ribbon cable. Now just use a pair of scissors and cut along your mark. The goal here is to push that clip away from the notch so we can remove it. You can fit something small and pointy such as a pair of small scissors or a needle into the holes and push the clip away from the notch while pulling the top from the connector. When the clip is free slowly pull the top part out with the top removed from the connector, carefully peel the ribbon cable. Grab the longer piece of the ribbon cable from earlier and lay the cut end over the top piece. The ribbon cable should nicely fit into the grooves of the top piece. Now grab the female connector and place it on the top. Press the two pieces together and make sure the clips nicely fit into the sides of the connector. We have to match the pieces together. If all goes well, the teeth will puncture the ribbon cable and close to the two pieces back together. And there you have it, a shortened Raspberry Pi ribbon cable. Bit of a hack, but it really does make closing the case much easier when we are all done. Next up, we need to prep the amp. Secure the amp to a pair of helping third hands, use the tip of soldering iron to heat up the solder and apply to the VIN, GND, A+, A-, plus and minus pins. This will make it easier to solder wires to the pins. Solder the positive wire from the speaker to the positive output pin on the amp. Then solder the negative wire to the negative output pin. Now we can proceed to work on the power circuit. We will need about 3cm in length of wire to connect the amp to the power boost. Now secure the amp to the helping third hands and solder the wires to the VIN and GND pins. Solder the VIN wire from the amp to the 5V pin on the power boost. Then solder the GND wire from the amp to the G pin. Now let's make the switch. Remove one of the legs from the slide switch. Secure it to the helping third hands and apply solder to the remaining legs. Now all we need is two wires that measure about 7 cm in length. Strip and thin the tips of each wire. Solder the two wires to the two leads of the slide switch. Now we need to solder the two wires to the EN and GND pins on the power boost. The polarity doesn't matter that much here. The switch can be installed in your preferred position later. Now we have our amp, speaker, power boost and slide switch all wired up and connected. To connect the amp to the Raspberry Pi 2, we'll need two wires. Cut two pieces of wire to about 10 cm in length, strip and thin the tips of each wire. Solder the new wires to the pin on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. The negative wire connects to the left pin, which the positive wire connects to the right one. Next up we need to prepare two 12mm buttons for our shoulder, left and right buttons. Start by clipping two of the four legs from each button. Use a pair of flat pliers to flatten out the legs. Secure the button to a pair of helping third hands and apply solder to each leg to thin them. We'll need two set of wires, four in total, to measure about 14cm in length. Solder wires to the legs of each button. Like before, use a pair of helping third hands to assist you. Polarity doesn't matter too much on these buttons. Now we need to connect our gamepad PCB to the power boost. 
Flip the gamepad PCB over and secure it in place. Apply solder to the two pins and solder in two wires. Locate the bumper labeled pins on the opposite side of the gamepad PCB. The orders of the pins are left button, right button, ground and ground. Once you are familiar with the pin order, solder in the wires from the 12mm tactile button. Now we can solder in the two wires connected to the power pins of the gamepad PCB to the power output pin on the power boost. Ok, now our components are connected and we are ready to mount them to the case, but first let's make a test fit. Once that's sorted, plug the ribbon cable into the Pi TFT GPIO breakout and connect to the other end to the gamepad. Then lay the Pi TFT over the Raspberry Pi and press it down to connect together the GPIOs until they are fully set. Now plug in the GST connector from our battery into the power boost. Flip the slide switch to power on the circuit. The Pi TFT should display the boot up scripts and automatically launch the RetroPie emulation station. If everything works during your test, you should be safe to power down the Raspberry Pi and move on to mounting it into a case. You can print it yourself if you have a 3D printer, the links are in the description, or you can buy it from a seller, the links are also in the description. The first component we need mount to the case is the display screen. Before we do that, we'll need to insert the rubber buttons into the case. Now that the buttons are in place, lay the screen over. Line up the mounting holes with the standoffs, then insert the screws into each mounting hole. Now insert the rubber D-pad, action buttons and pause and start into the cutouts of the top case part. Place the gamepad PCB over the standoffs and line them up with the screws. Slowly and carefully fasten the screws into the standoff. Next we can install the Pi cable to connect the gamepad PCB to the display. Now our display and gamepad PCB are mounted to the case. Grab the battery and plug in the GST connector to the GST port on the power boost. Now we can install the battery. A good spot for it is right behind the display. To keep it in place we can use a piece of gaffer tape. Try to keep it closely against the Pi cable. Let's go ahead and pop the speaker. Lay the speaker over the cavity with the grill and press it down to snap it. Add some blue tack to the back of the buttons and position them over the two square spots on the mounting part. Press them down to stick them into place. Fasten screws into the standoffs of the shoulder mount. Next insert the shoulder button into the cutout of the bottom case part. Now is a good time to insert the slide switch into the bottom case. Take note of the off position of the slide and install it to your liking. Next up let's mount the pie to the bottom case. Lay the pie over the standoffs and line up the screws with the mounting holes. Once in place, fasten the screws all the way until they are flush with the surface of the case. To mount our power boost you will need to add some blue tack on the bottom and just snap it in place. The same for our amp. Now it's time to close it all up. Before that, make sure all the wires are inside the case, bring the top and bottom close and press them together. Then inspect the edges and see if everything is in place. No wires hanging up. If it all looks good, start pressing the top area close together. Now you just have to insert the SD card and the handheld console is finally finished and ready to play. Turn it on and RetroPie should automatically boot. The buttons are pre-mapped to the expected controls. For all the parts and tools needed for this project, you will find links in the description. And here we have it, a handheld console where you can run your favorite emulators and games. It's a nice weekend project which is pretty easy to put together with the help of some basic tools. Hope you guys liked it, if you did, hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing. If you want to see more, check some of my other videos, you might find something you like. Thanks for watching, I will see you in the next one.